Good. I was uh, just waiting to hear you and then um, Mr. Mind was hooking up. Hola. Hey. So uh, you're not recording yet. Oh, you are. You are recording. Okay. Well, let's just go then. <laughs> Wherever you want to go. How, um, how do you, how would you like to proceed? Um, well, first of all, what's going on with my video here? Doing weird stuff. Looks like they're uh, finally onto us, <laughs> beginning to play with it. Oh, well, maybe. All right, well, that's okay then. If that's all it is, I don't care. Um, how would I like to proceed? Well, let me think. Um, I mean, the format we did last week where um, you were asking questions, I kind of like that. Um, You know, maybe maybe uh, we could use this time to start um, seeing how we uh, can start to work our magic together. I guess does would that seem to be a good procedure? Uh, sure. I mean, I I I know I missed my chance with your feedback on the human design and uh, gene keys, but I I do see that as highly valuable. Mm -hmm. For, for understanding your work and understanding what you do with people mm -hmm. and then to use this as an example to, to bring others in. Um, uh -huh. mm -hmm. That could be something. I mean, I'd love to get some feedback in terms of <clears throat> my human design and gene keys. Oh, oh, would you, you want to go there? We can do that. Sure, why not? Because th th this would also be, it's an example that we could send to the, the people we just spoke to today to mm. show an example again of what you do and just doing it with, with me, it gives them a deeper insight into me. And it's like we're using our work to highlight ourselves in a sense. So Yeah, because, well, yes, and that's true. Um, because when I take you through your gene keys, I do it myself too to show you how, um, you know, which is the way I work. Like if we'll just start going through different nodes in the gene keys, then um, like I'll start with my shadow of the same gene key you're going to do, whatever the position is, whether okay. it's, yeah. So let me, um, let me get, I'm only going to need yours. I'm not going to need mine because I don't know how to do a split screen share anyway. I don't even know if it's possible, but um, I do have um, your stuff. So let me, um, well, I don't, I don't have your gene keys, but what we'll use is we'll use the, um, uh, advanced imaging, which is a really nice, I, I'd like people to start exposing this particular brand of uh, software too, because that'll get more people to get on Jovian Archive and buy it from the site of the creator of human design in the first place. So, okay, now let me get out of there. All right. Because um, I don't have a gene keys from you, so unless you've sent me a gene keys, I can't do that. Because each person has to go on the Gene Keys site and request it, and then you get it. Um, okay. There is no there there is no software for making a Gene Keys thing. Okay. Um, um. Or I can just you, uh, but you prob we're going to need reference to yours. I mean, I I'm could use I could use mine because that would at least show the the Gene Keys um, diagram. And then, but then, and then I would just cue you. I'll just cue you in because I have your your chart up, um, and uh, I can do it. I can I can just quick. I'll just get my profile if you if you need it. I can just get it right now. Where from Jinkies? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you want, all you got to do is go on there and request a free profile, and they send it yeah, to you. I'll just do that right now. Yeah, go for it. It's pretty quick and easy. Just got to maybe have your... if, if if you want to give a download as to how the gene keys and the human design connect together. Well, they're two different systems, but they overlap in certain areas, and um, and also, yeah, it's it's you have to kind of, I mean, you don't have to know the human design to do your gene keys. You, you can just trust and go along with whatever the gene keys is doing. Um, but just, yeah, while you're doing that, I'll give people a, I'll give people a shot at uh, a look at what a gene keys chart looks like as compared to a, um, as compared to a uh, human design chart so they can see what is the difference. 
So right there we go. Yeah. All right. Hopefully I can share my screen without having to. I think I've got to make you a host. Yeah, you got to do that. Host disabled participant screen share. Okay, I'll just do it right now. Yeah, okay, so you're a host now. Yeah, I can, okay, good. All right, good. All right, so this, this is what a, a Gene Keys chart looks like um, and it's still in development there's other things that are actually going to go in here later but I won't get into that right now but basically you've got this is your life's work this one right here this is your evolution this is your radiance and this is your purpose and that's called your activation sequence and basically in uh, human design I wonder if I can just flip this over probably not let's try um, oh I can and in human design, that's what this is across the top here. This here is your life's work, but it's not called that. It's called your personality sun. This is your evolution in the gene keys. Here it's called your uh, personality earth. And then over here you have your radiance in the gene keys. Here it's called your design sun. And in the gene keys, this is called your purpose, and here it's called your design earth. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the reason there are two sets of data is because the stuff on the right here, all over on this side, is from the moment of birth. So you have your sun, your earth, north node, south node, and all these planets, where they were in terms of the I Ching um, at the moment of your birth. Oh, okay. The, uh, it's called the rave mandala, the wheel. Um, but, and this here... This happened 88 degrees of the sun, which is about 90 days, give or take a little, before you were born. This was the completion of your vehicle. This was you coming in as a spirit, a conscious, uh, or not conscious, a, but a living, a living um, consciousness that spent the next three months to getting used to this and this vehicle over here that was prepared in the first six months of your time in the womb. The last three months, this 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 came to, I guess you could say, maturation as far as a newborn baby is concerned, and so you were imprinted with all this at the moment of birth. And this over here is 88 degrees of the sun before you were born. Um, so that's why we have red and black. The black is all the stuff on the right over here. The red is the stuff over here. Okay. So you've got what's called your personality. Mostly have to do more with your mind and how you see things and your awareness and this over here has to do with your body how, how you maintain health through how you eat and your environment and how you relate to your physical environment so that's that's what this site is um so so that's that's kind of um how the human design is and so when we get back over here so we've got we've got the as i just said this is your personality sun right here, your life's work. Do you want to put, like I found, do you want me to put mine up? Uh, yeah, why don't you, why don't you put yours up and then we can just start going into it. Uh, okay, so we'll if just, you, you have to make me host again. Oh, I have to make you host. Okay, let me stop sharing and let me. If, if uh, you go to my name and go more. Oh, well, you know what we can do? You can do multiple participants can share simultaneously. Then we might be able to bring up both our charts. How about that? Okay. Let's try it and see. I okay. just made multiple, so see if you can share now. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And, oh, good. There you are. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the... <sighs> yeah. Excellent. And let me see if I can bring mine in at the same time. Uh, view options. Uh, side by side. Let's see if we can do side by side now. I'll try to bring mine up. Is it is it often that they're sort of like double numbers, like this 211 or 259s? Oh, yeah, sure. You should turn on all your, you should turn everything on, too. You've got over here in advance, you've got a lot of things off. We need to see the lines, the pathways, okay. the siddhas. I know them all, but you, uh, well, I don't know your lines because I'm not. Yeah, just turn everything on. You don't need to put on your birth data, though. Keep that off. Nobody needs to know about that. 
Now, let me see if I bring me up, will that let us split? Let's see, that'd be great. Then we can go side by, nope. So I'm not gonna share, it's just gonna be you. Okay, good. So there's all your stuff, good. Oh, you didn't, uh, what is not, lines, hit lines. You want the lines? Well, of course, That's okay. that gives nuances. And it, it never hurts to have that too. Okay, so I guess what we'll do, um, if you, this is going to stretch your um, spiritual muscles because we're going to go through and try to nail. I mean, I know, I know, I know, I can do it because I've done it before. But we're going to work on nailing and can make this bigger again. This is that's. Let's make that bigger. This thing, can you make it bigger or not? Which bigger? This your screen. What you're sharing. Make it bigger. Um, how did it get? How did it shrink? Why did it shrink down? Um. So Maybe stop sharing and reshare because maybe then it will come up. Bigger. How about that? Is oh, this? There, yeah. Is that big enough? Yeah. It's just, there you go. It's just why isn't it fitting in there? All right. It doesn't matter. Um, Do you want to start at the bottom? Start at the top? We're going to start at the top. Um, all right. So we're just going to go through um, each sphere and we're going to just give a, we're going to kind of, do something to sort of demonstrate the potential of um, th these gene keys. So um, we'll start here. This is your life's work. And in the human design, it's called your personality sun. Um, and it goes from force to strength to majesty. My, uh, my particular life's work is would be a 7.4. And the seven is goes from division to guidance to virtue all right so at this at, we'll do, we're just going to maybe see if we can nail it in a sentence that would be great if not we'll open it up a bit and we'll go as far as we can we'll go through as many of these spheres as we can there's a certain order you go in to work these gene keys and i'll take us through that and we'll go as far as we can uh, right now we're going to try um to get through the activation sequence, which is the life's work, evolution, radiance, and down below where you can't see it, the um, purpose. And if we get through that, we'll start going up through the, the Venus sequence and we'll go as far as we can. Just to give um, people a feel for what it's, uh, what's possible with this. So basically life's work is obviously what we're here to do. Um, and it doesn't really matter what you do, it's, it's, the, it's what you bring to it. That is um, what we're taking a look at here, because the more you're in touch with what you bring to any life's work you're doing, um, the, the more, um, how to say it, the more that um, life's work will be a representation of, of your truth, uh, and th as it is through your genetic um, create creativity. Um, so, like I said, my life's work, I start with division. So for me, division is, um, in the shadow, is like, basically it's the way I separate myself and cut myself off from, and use my life's work as a way to divide myself and, and, and to divide and conquer, <laughs> to basically keep myself separate from others and, and, to, and to kind of stay hidden and, um, or if I want to throw a smoke screen, I'll use it to dot, to kind of like um, be real dic dictatorial and really push people around with with my uh, energy or my knowledge or or any number of other, or my martial art chi energy or whatever, and it creates divisiveness. And that can happen a lot of times uh, in my shadow, especially when I'm in a, a kind of a mood and and um, not really. Um, wanting to connect so and, and especially in in my work i tend to be very much of a loner in, in the work i do right now in the world which isn't necessarily so when i'm doing the I'm, it's like i'm loving the work i do i'm not at doing the work i love although that's starting to happen more um and it's eventually going to take over but i'm sort of coming out of the more divisive um aspect of of my life's work. So that was more than a sentence, but it was, but it wasn't much more than a minute or two. So that's how long I'd like to see if we can keep it 
as we stack through these. So now you go ahead and do your your take on your life's work when you're coming from the shadow of force. Okay. Um, I would say that, you know, when I'm in a rush and when I'm feeling an urgency, when I'm trying to force anything with people, it definitely does not work. And I, I found that I'm at a different pace. And so I need to slow down and match where somebody's at um, and really honor where they're at ahead of what I see needs to happen because I'm usually, you know, 10 steps ahead and I'm not honoring, you know, kind of the need of the moment in the way that it needs it. But, I'm, I, but I have gotten better. I, I am aware of that. Okay, good. Excellent. All right, so if we step up to, and that's all we need to do, just a sentence or two, just to give people, we're going to give people a taste today of how, how to work these. Okay. So then my life's work when it comes to my, my gift of the seventh, it's number seven, you can call it seventh gene key, I call them life codes because I do something slightly different or than um, in the way I interpret, in the way I uh, demonstrate what, what each of these codes are. So for me, it is guidance. So not only do I get in touch with the guidance within myself and trust that from my heart, um, and then I find myself opening to brand new possibilities, usually requires a jump out of my comfortable routine and, and into usually it's meeting somebody new that and we click and connect and all of a sudden there's all these possibilities available. And then, and that's um, one aspect of it as I trust the guidance in myself, but also my guidance then comes out more towards others because I'm because the gate seven is the gate of the future, it's the gate of the Sphinx. Um, it's also in the traditional Ching, I Ching, the army, but I, I transform army into O U R and then M E. So it's our me which is, I believe, the where we're headed into our future. It's not about the army. And there are good things about the army in terms of discipline and organization and all those things. And uh, the seventh gate is a, a new type of leader that's coming for the collective in, the, from the future. And um, so as I, fi I find as I start to come from guidance, more and more people are um, trusting me in that guidance because they're finding that what I say is accurate. It's not just mental knowledge. It actually has experiential oomph to it. And it's also been, um, it reflects people's experience because I've spent decades um, studying the human condition and through so many different transmissions and also directly through my own experience of meditation and other forms, not just meditation, many other ways of becoming aware. So that's um, just a taste of guidance for me, a couple of minutes and you, strength? Uh, I, I guess I've gone through quite a lot to get to here. Um, I, I'm very persistent, and as a result, I've become quite strong in, in who I am and what I'm doing. Um, and sometimes that can be a disadvantage. You can be too strong for people, and so you have to sort of uh, tone down. So sometimes your gift is not always <laughs> the best thing, it seems. Um, and I do feel like I have an inner resolve for carrying this out. I, I certainly have my emotional ups and downs, but I, I feel strong in terms of continuing the course. Yeah, I, I think um, in this context, the strength is about inner strength and the ability to bear the burden of your knowledge until it's the right time. I think that's more what it's indicating. Um, coming across as too strong is a shadow aspect of a different of a different life code and it's not called strength it's called something else mm. strength here is only seen in the sense of uh, a way of balancing out and um bringing that that tendency to force things back into a natural alignment with um, nature so that the strength you feel is because you're in tune with the universal life force and it's moving you so those are some of the things that uh, can help you understand a little bit more um, about what they what this means when it says strength as the gift of your genius um, okay. and then as we jump into the sit up for me it is uh, virtue and and more and more I see virtue as um, 
like doing what I do right now, the ability to be able to take people into deeper states of the human experience, which could be consciousness, but it could also be very much of a, an awareness of your senses. It could be an opening of knowledge. Uh, it could be any number of things, access of memory or, or higher states of consciousness, depending. But I seem to have this ability to be able, by entering into the space and demonstrating it as a role model, it seems to open the door for other people to access that. So, I, so virtue for me, it seems to be that like I'm a doorway for people to move into and access um, expanded states and much more elaborate uh, and, and sophisticated states of awareness and consciousness. Uh, and also even in more subtle ways, it opens doors in their lives that aren't even addressed in these kind of meetings, but just by tapping into our genetics. Um, virtue, virtue is just that thing that's the helping hand. It, it literally, when, when it's activated, it helps. And it helps with wherever a person needs it most. And that seems to be something that, uh, uh, you know, I never know how it's going to go when I open uh, my virtue up because it's basically, um, yeah, it's tap, it's it, it, as a mudra where you cross, you cross your hands over your chest and uh, it's basically forms what's called angel wings. So it's funny because that's one of my biggest skills is to tap into angelic consciousness, not the not the kind the new age does, which is more about really it's it, those frequencies are very light and they're more like fairies and gnomes and elves and angelic consciousness. If the first time you tap into it, if you do it correctly, it'll send you to the ground real quick because the energy is so overwhelmingly positive. It's terrifying. That's how you know you made it. The, you made, you did it correctly because it's, it will, uh, it will, it'll floor you in, but in a very positive way. Um, but at the same time, when you experience things like endless love or infinite compassion, it's uh, your physical vehicle needs to touch the ground to give it to the earth because you will find that you will quickly leave your body permanently if you stay in touch with that energy that's coming directly from a, a being that isn't limited to a physical body, which angels are not. So that just kind of opens it up, tells a little story and, and makes it visual so you can start to kind of enter into what that might mean. So that's that's virtue. And for you is majesty. Uh, well, when I asked you last time, your answer is still within me of <clears throat> surrendering to the universal flow of the universe and not trying to force anything, just allowing the divine energy to move through you. And I would imagine that the more one is like that, the more majesty you have because you are fully embodying your highest self or soul or frequency mm -hmm. and um, you're not limited by your ego self identity. Yeah, that's all good. Um, good um, deductive and inductive reasoning. Yes, true. Um, I, I invite you right now to just kind of like a lot of times when I move into a sitter and I'll just do it and then I'll, I'll ask you to do it and see what happens because I think it'll, it'll produce an effect. I say I open space to the higher and I ask for help from above as I open my present moment to receive what the consciousness of higher intelligence in the form of virtue to descend into this vehicle of mine and make me aware of its presence in such a way that it activates a field of consciousness that touches others with its presence. And that's just, yeah. And so there you go. And as I do that, and as that virtue comes in, it's going to help you to open, to, for you to also open space to the higher, higher and ask for help from above for the dissension of grace in the form of majesty through your vehicle in such a way that it reaches out and touches others in your immediate consciousness field and maybe off into the future through this video in a way that is clear and unmistakable what the presence of majesty is as as it moves through higher intelligence of luminous beings and translates into us and our luminosity through these physical vehicles. I get the image of a lion, and I think majesty is 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 regal in terms of the natural being of movement. 
and the being in your highest design and having no fear and seeing what, what needs to happen for the highest good for all and being able to communicate that in a, in a good way where you're not looking at all at personal desires, you're just looking at <clears throat> the good of the community, the good of the species, the good of all beings, and that your heart is very centered in your connection to source. And because of that, everything coming from you is, is really filled with love. I think there's, there's an allowance. It's beautiful. Yeah. As I tuned into it with you and due to your frequency, because that's, of course, what I have to depend on, because I don't have this in my chart anywhere, gene keys or human design. And I felt myself sinking into my being and experience a sense of raw power, but it, but it felt incredibly good. It felt incredibly like I was at, like I was, it was true home and the sense of being in touch with all of my energy. And the more I, and, and just before you started to speak, I, all I wanted to do was just kind of rest and, and rest into that. And I, I'm, so I'm finally getting a sense now through you, thank you, of what is true majesty. Um, um, yeah, that, that's quite a, uh, yeah, that's very beautiful. And thank you for describing all your experience because that fills it in with a whole bunch of other pieces. And in the in the interest of time, let's move on. And that's, so that's just for everybody in the video following, that's us moving through the spectrum of consciousness of each of our life's work. Now we're gonna step down diagonal to the right to the evolution. I, I'm which, just wondering, before we go there, uh, you did say to add the lines. Could you say something about the line? Sure. Um, in this particular case, the third line for you means you are a changer. It says so right there. So basically that means that you're going to constantly, you know, at the, it's, you know, it depends on what you go through. If you're, if you're at the level of force, you're going to constantly be changing your angle to try and get something shoved down somebody's throat. <laughs> But at the level of, of strength, what you're going to do is be able to, you're going to be able to be strong enough to, to stay in your center as a life force moves you according to changing circumstances and the flow of the energy as it wants to come through your heart. And at the level of majesty, um, you basically rest in your own being and totally in tune with the life force and allow it to emanate out from you. And that will create change in just the way it's needed in everything around you because your majesty will provide the correct kind of change that's needed simply by your presence. So that's, that's um, one way. Yeah. That's how you would actualize those qualities through the line. That's I, your... I, I just wanted to add that if, if we're, if we're going at this pace, we're going to do two of them. Um, we might want to stick to the one, one sentence thing. Yeah. I think at this point we will, but I really wanted to open up a bit so people could get a sense of what that's like. But yeah, we can, I can, we can do the one sentence thing now that we've had a little warm up. Can you um, make it go up a little so we can get a little better take on the the evolution and the. You mean there the whole... you go. There, no, just right. So it's right centered. I don't. We don't need the bottom. We don't need the uh, bottom one. Just so it's now up a little, so it's in the middle. There you go. Perfect. Okay, so for myself, I will. Uh, I'll stick with one line, I promise. So now with the evolution, uh, I have the 13th gate, and that is discord. And discord simply means I'm out of touch with my essence. And hence, I feel emotionally, um, uh, you know, my, my vibration is discordant with my experience. It's out of whack. There you go. One sentence. You, uh, superficial. Okay, my, my superficiality would be... Um, you know, just keeping things too very light and not going into anything deep. As as an avoidance strategy, is that why you're? Is well, that what you mean? I, or I feel I, I don't really go into this 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 shadow much. Um, I don't like superficial conversation. Um, 
I actually hate it. Okay. Well, then we'll leave it at what you just said then um, to keep it light or whatever. Uh, okay. And then the 13th gate for me, the gift is discernment. So that is for me the um, fine line between coming from my essence, my truth, and when I am not, and when I'm in, again, when it, when there's discordance. So the discernment is is realigning with with my um, with my how how shall I call it the authenticity of my auric field as it exists in the moment, and just being being presencing myself as I am, authentically. You self assurance. Um, it would be, you know, just where. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going. I I know who I am. Cool. All right. And then the 13th the Siddha is empathy. And that's easy for me because at any moment I can either extend myself into another person's uh, center of gravity and literally be in their shoes, or I can allow a higher being consciousness to do the same thing to me and literally experience what that higher consciousness is experiencing. That's empathy. Empathy is being in the, in the place of another being. And yeah. A presence would be, there's an absence of a ego identification. I'm fully conscious and aware and I'm open to the full presence of spirit and my being. All right, now we'll leave it right, leave this up and down right here. We're going to move over here to radiance, and this in human design is your design sun. And for me, the gate is the second gate. It's the gate of the uh, higher self. And um, intuitive intelligence, as somebody once said. Anyway, uh, the, the shadow of that is dislocation. And dislocation me means being literally um not where literally not where i'm at <laughs> just being absolutely out of touch with with um what is what is is transpiring because i am caught up in uh, basic mundane um occurrences without any sensitivity toward the the, the higher uh higher um uh, my higher self that's also present there um yeah, that's simple. I guess dishonesty for me would be <clears throat> when I'm dishonest with myself, but I'm not being accurate in my own self-assessment. And when I'm not actually speaking my truth with people, I'm afraid of hurting their feelings. So I, I'm more dishonest in that way. Okay. Um, and even though we started there, we're going to do something that's going to challenge people. We're going to jump back to evolution and remember that that we're going to take the lines and I'll do it real quick um, with you and we won't worry about mine just to give a demonstration but uh, evolution is your blind spots your greatest challenges so that's what you're looking at and through um, I'll wait and through um, and through energy and experience you learn uh, when uh, when you're not not touching anything beyond what is um you know on the surface of things you're just staying on the surface of things um and that when you shift into your gift the energy and experience comes from you starting to trust when your higher self came through and started to give you a greater sense of the space you're in because you're more present you have more attention you're more in the now and that it helps you to start to deal with um, the challenges that come up in your evolution, your blind spots. It starts to remove them. You start to become aware of them, where ultimately your energy and experience is the energy and experience of your higher self and your pure presence. And then, in essence, there is really no blind spot left. Uh, and then it's more about the collective that you're dealing with and how to move into collective 
um, systems and the blind spots that you need to penetrate with your presence. So that's a nice way to look at that because um, we want to, we are, each one is a position. So now as we get to radiance, that's about the health of your body. So as you said, um, dishonesty, then you may want to take a look at that in light of health of your body as I would in terms of dislocation. Also very easy for me to be very dislocated and up in my mind and not in touch with my form. And many times I'll, I'll, I'll eat um, in a very sort of um, gluttonous way. Not anymore. I mean, I used to when I was younger, I can't get away with that anymore. But a lot of times I just may be in my mind and thinking about things and being not present with feeding myself. So that's another way I might dislocate from allowing my higher and higher my higher self to be present with my uh, physical form. So um, if you you could if you feel like it, you don't have to. Um, you could say something more about. Um, your uh, dishonesty in relation to your health. The radi your radiance is, you know, the, the sum total of how your aura shines through your form, your physical form. Well, I, I guess my dishonesty would be in how badly I'm treating my body in terms of my, um, basically that. Like I, I put, huh. I, I was paralyzed when I was 28. Okay. And after that, I, I switched from the body to the mind in terms yeah. of my development because I felt I couldn't develop my body anymore to the same degree. And yeah. so I, anyway, it was a very big thing for me. Yeah, that I can see why line five impact, you literally had an impact there and also how it impacts you. My line is line six and it's what it is for me is nurturing. And when I'm dislocated, I'm only nurturing a very small part of myself to the detriment of the rest of, of my form. Okay, so then if we move into, for me, um, gate, the second gate is orientation. And orientation always means for me, find my center, get centered. And then I'm in touch with that, which is where the life force intersects my vehicle. And then I'm nurtured because my line is line six and line six is nurture. Um, so, and for you, intimacy, so. How does that shift for you in this position of the radiance of your form? Well, I think if I, if I remember what I read also about the gene key um, in my chart that struck home was that if I'm in a very intimate, loving connection with one person, at least I have a very different viewpoint on life. I'm, I'm a very different person as opposed to what I don't. And so intimacy, is very important to me. I like being deep with my friends and people I'm close to. And um, I feel as if I'm living the life when I am. And if I don't have that, I'm very, very sort of disappointed. Mm. Okay. Cool. And then uh, as we move into um, the Siddha, for me, the second line, uh, I mean, the second gate, sixth line, second gate is unity. So, and, um, and the line is nurture again. So it's how uh, my higher self is nurtured through the experience of unity and its connection with uh, obviously everything. Um, and the more I feel connected to everything, the healthier that is for my body. And hence I practice things like Tai Chi and things like that, which um, are very much connected with the interconnectedness of everything, because in order to really get deep into and experience all of what Tai Chi has to offer, every single part of you has to connect and move in a completely coordinated and syncopated and aligned and interconnected way. It's very beautiful and it includes your breath and your awareness, not just your movement. And uh, So that's, that's really a very down to earth way of um, describing how radiance works for me in the sense of unity, which is what we're shooting for. <laughs> and it's very nurturing. It's like my ultimate vitamins. I don't need to go to the doctor or do anything. That's my ultimate treat to my, my health and my, and my um, physical uh, radiance and is tai chi, that through Tai Chi. So, and you? I guess transparency would be <laughs> when I have nothing to hide. I'm fully accepting of 
everything about myself and my situation. I have nothing, you know, everything is there and I'm, I'm loving of everything that is there. And I'm fully transparent with who I am. Yeah, that felt really, uh, I, I, yeah, very nice, very nice. And, and you're doing exactly what the exercise is. Not, o- not only are you sharing it, but you're also being this, because I just felt your transparency literally go through me and felt what that's like, so thank you. Because it, it's not that we're just talking about these things, we're actually accessing that level of awareness and consciousness in the spectrum of consciousness that, that is what we're shooting for too. So it has to come through in, in your voice and your being and everything. So now we pop down to purpose and you've already shifted it. Thank you. We're, that's perfect. For me, it's the first gate, sixth line. Um, and the shadow of the uh, first gate. And the sixth line, by the way, is cellular. And as a, yours is the voice and the frequency. And mine is cellular and it has to do with intent. And we'll get into that a little bit. It's basically the aura. So, so for me, it speaks through the aura. For you, it's going to speak through the voice. Um, and the reason I say that is because these these two last two gates that we're working on, the one we just did, and the one we're doing now, uh, are coming through the design. And the design is how other people perceive you. The first two that we did are how we think we are, but the second two are definitely people can observe you or and feel you and pick up these two, literally these two gates, if it's coming through um, and you're, it, you know, it's going to come through anyway. It's either shadow, gift, or symbol. And for me, the uh, shadow is entropy. So it's a state uh, where my my whole system is pretty much um, run out of energy. <laughs> and, and that's a natural state, actually. And if you tune into it correctly before creation, um, before a creative um, state occurs. So, um, it's it's the shadow on this one is it, 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 the hard part is dealing with that emptiness with that state of vacuum before things are going to come in and fill you up and uh, so that's that's all. It, it's just that and people can definitely pick that up when they're around me when I'm in that entropic state I try to pretty much stay in, stay in my own space that was a big sentence <laughs> and for you victimization uh, victimization would be when I'm blaming others, when I'm blaming my situation, I'm blaming my circumstances, I'm blaming the world, and I'm just in a sense of that I'm sort of being persecuted. Um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And remember, this is in relation to your purpose. So when you're wanting to put your purpose out here, and in this case, we're talking higher purpose, um, true purpose. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. For me, I have to become totally empty and handle that feeling of entropy before the life the energy comes in and my purpose comes out and for you it's the um yeah it's it's the victimization all right if we step that up to the gift for me that's um freshness so um that's the way purpose comes into into me through my higher self it literally comes through my heart as a a wind a kind of a wind an energetic wind that invigorates and that's how I experience the freshness. So that, that's pretty simple. That's exactly how I get it. And, it. and when it does that, my whole aura just swells with energy and starts to become alive. And you, with uh, the first guess, level, there's two levels of freedom here. So go ahead. I guess, I guess the first level of freedom would be sort of the freedom of self-responsibility when I realize that I do have the power to implement my purpose. It is not dependent upon anybody. When I stand in my truth, I have the full actualization of the the energy coming through me. Nice. And for me, um, as I move into the Siddha, it's about beauty. And beauty to me is this what happens when I come into direct encounter and contact with the, um, the, the mystery, the mystery as it's unfolding before me and showing me and showing me, there's nothing more beautiful than when I'm in a creative flow because things are just arising in the moment and responding to whatever's occurring. 
for me and I'm just, I'm either receiving or I'm sharing and everything is just in alignment and moving so uh, incredibly in my, it's in those times when I've found that my purpose comes out most easily. What am I doing here? And it just, it's just whatever's in the moment in front of me, I'm present with it and I'm, and I'm gi giving and receiving whatever's needed and fulfilling that moment. And it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's an incredible space because it, j I just soar inside the emotionally. I just soar when I'm in touch with that indescribable mystery unfolding as me, as me. And you, the, the, the deeper sitting freedom. Um, I think when I am in tune with the freedom of all beings and not just thinking about myself, but I'm, I'm sort of like Braveheart, you know, I, I'm willing to, um, I guess, fight for the freedom of all beings. Yeah. And you bring it through your voice over there. <laughs> That's cool. And for me, it just comes through my aura that beauty it comes through my aura and i guess people and that's why it's so easy for people to pick up yeah okay we're gonna and we're gonna we're gonna keep uh moving now this for me i think it's fine because not only is that the end of the activation sequence but it's the beginning of the venus sequence and for me uh, that it's it's not I, I don't see it as a whole lot different either one it's it's whether i'm it's facing in and i'm experiencing what i'm going through at, at the purpose level or whether it's facing out and others are receiving my purpose so it, whether it, I, it's really whether i'm alone or whether i'm with other people but it's pretty much the same it's the, everything i described about those three if there's anything you want to add in terms of because now we're moving into the field of the venus sequence it's all the red color which in some is full and others it's half and half because it intersects with uh in this case act down here with the activation sequence which was colored green um so for me I, i'm just going to stay with what i already said i don't need to elaborate if there's anything you want to elaborate that's that's may come through this in your relation to other to the other say well, it now I, yeah i mean i i guess that paper on the 5015 key looking at society in general, what society's going through, mm. and looking at what's come through me like a, a new paradigm operating system. So, yeah, you know, there's a, there's a great link to my life purpose with the state of the world as it is. Um, they're both intertwined, so. Yeah, and just for everybody's uh, knowledge book, the 55th Gene Key is where the mutation is occurring and going to occur, and where uh, our species, that is, humanity is going to be upgraded into a whole new species. It's going to start, the spark of mutation is going to be placed in the 55th gene key. So, and that for you is your purpose. So obviously um, you have a, 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 a quite a role to play in the shift that's coming for sure. Okay, and then as we shift into, um, through the Dharma, uh-huh, as we shift into our attractor field, for me, it's the 24th gate, fifth line. Um, and the 24th gate, the, um, the shadow is addiction. So it's this tendency in me um, to become, uh, to get into a very dip kind of, uh, how would you put it? Oh, I'm sorry. That wait a minute. That's I'm sorry. Take that back. It's the 19th gate, fifth line. My 24th gate is somewhere else. The 19th gate, fifth line. Sorry, I take that back. 19th gate still the same line though, fifth line. 19th gate. The shadow is codependence. So um, I, I can tend to get when it comes to the other. I can tend to get very codependent on the things that I become habitually. Um, attracted to in the other and can tend to get you know um, yeah needy needy in my attractor field i can get needy so and for you pride when it comes um, to relating to the other how you attract the other well i i would definitely say that i'm overly sensitive and i do have i can be insulted easily 
and I have a, a tendency to cut people out if I feel that they crossed a certain line with me. Uh, it was way worse in my in my past, but it's still present. I find that I I can get treated, I can get dismissed pretty easily in certain situations, and I'm sort of sick of it. So, my, okay, uh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. definitely part of the shadow. That's your judgment about you too. So. Anyway, that's shadow. Thank you for. I definitely felt that one. Um, and then. We move into the gift. The gift for me is sensitivity. So it's about, and I, I've had to learn this so much when it comes to others. I, if I if I don't want to attract what comes at me from codependence, I have to be sensitive to another space and literally learn when they are open for my energy and when I can invite them. So that's quite a quite a quite a uh, quite a learning for me. And for you, artfulness. I, I would say that um, when I'm on, I can have quite a, a, an ability to navigate different situations and to, um, I guess, kind of like be a wizard behind the scenes, uh, make things happen that uh, are a bit magical when I'm in a good mood. Nice. Yeah, I definitely, yeah, okay. And then uh, if we move into the Siddha, for me, uh, the 19th is sacrifice. And um, the way I see sacrifice is that I literally get out of the way completely and allow, because the 19th gate is, is where all kinds of um, forms, whether they're phys physical or inorganic, maybe, and that's, I guess, why I'm so good at um, being able to connect with any kind of intelligence in the universe, I just have to open myself to it. And so there you go. That's my sit of the 19th. Uh, the invisibility for me would be when I'm completely egoless and I'm channeling energy for the group, which I can do in many situations, and no one really knows I'm there, and I'm just energetically doing lots of wizard things that... Mm -hmm. Um, I feel is good for the whole that I'm part of. Mm. Excellent. All right. And then we're going to move up into um, through karma into the IQ, which has to do with our intellect um, and how we relate intellectually with others. And for me, um, That is the 62nd gate, uh, and the sh it is the shadow of intellect. How funny that I have the very name of, of this position as my shadow. And it means becoming overly intellectual and, and disembodied and out of touch with what I'm sharing with the other person, although it is in the place of intellect. But I, I I just it just means be getting too mental, and, and, and everybody knows what that means when you're just going on about something, and there's no... Um, you know, nothing to it. It's just blah, blah, blah. So that's what it's, my shadow is in this place. I guess obscurity, and I've got a double obscurity, which <laughs> makes sense where, you know, I, I can isolate, I can uh, camouflage, I can do many things to leave the collective or the group, and I have done that basically during most of this time, and, and I... And then there's another side of me that gets very angry that I'm not part of things or invited to things. So, it, so in it, terms of mental obscurity, put it in one sentence, please. Um, I distance myself mentally from the others. Okay. Through through obfuscation. I, I, that sounds, I, I get you. Um, and then it's hard to follow you and hard to follow others. I mean, at least that... From what little I know of you, that that could be a, a potential. Well, I'll, I'll I just I will leave the situation. Uh -huh. I won't say goodbye. Um, I'll just disappear. Wow, cool. That's definitely obscure. <laughs> and and then if we jump into the gift for me, the sixty second gate, it goes from um, intellect. 
to precision. So, so at that point, um, I start getting in tune with my, uh, my capacity to give the right codes to the right experiences and things start to line up instead of just going on about some mental nonsense that really doesn't matter and have, has nothing to do with anything. So when I get precise, it means I'm lining up with the experiential as it's happening. And I'm really good at doing that, really good at nailing it as it's happening. Um, and you, idealism? Well, I'd say that I have a great capacity for the seeing the best or the ideal in life. And I have lived most of my time there while designing what I've designed. Totally. I mean, when I looked at your charts, I felt such a, I felt that so, and I just give you a little feedback because this is about the other and I'm one of those others you presented all that to. And I definitely got the idea beyond the idealism. I also saw the light, but you'll, you'll tell me about that. So now as we move into the sit of the 62nd gate is impeccability. And impeccability is a quality when I am expressing things because this is intellectual. So when I'm intellectually expressing things, not only of intellectually expressing whatever I'm expressing, but literally being the frequency or vibration of what I'm expressing. So I become what it is. I literally manifest the quality of what I'm expressing intellectually. And that's impeccability. I guess for light, um, at some point you sort of have to leave the mind and leave everything and be pure light. I, I don't know how often I get there. I, I, do, I have had some pretty awesome experiences, but I don't think I come here enough. I think I get stuck in the ideal and um, haven't reached quite the capacity to channel pure light. Well, yeah, I don't know. I, I pick it up. Um... I, I just got a hit of it, so you tapped into it. As you said that, you had to bring light to say that. So, I'll, so just take that in because you, you, you may, you may, whether you, whether you, in your opinion, you get there enough or not, you just brought it in when you needed to. So that's all that matters right now. So I will say bravo on that one because I felt it. I felt it came in and touched me. Now, just remember, you're going to do it all over again, but from the position of emotion. So, because we're now shifting into the EQ, which is the emotional. Uh, and for me, that's where it's the 24th gate and it's about addiction. Um, and I can get very addicted to certain crappy emotional states, quite simply. Um, in the 24th gate, the, um, this, the shadow is um, addiction. And for you, it's obscurity again. So, emotional obscurity, really. Just yeah, I, I guess I would say that. In the same way, I can I distance myself from people and groups and some people that I'm close to. Like I, I feel like I've been um, not quite shunned, but I've been on the fringes for so long that it it became it has become a habit of being emotionally distant. When deep down, you know, I, I really want to feel close to people, so. Um, Definitely, there's that shadow there. Cool. Um, and then as I move into the gift of the 24th gate for me in this position where we're at now, emotional quote, the emotional quotient, um, it is invention. And uh, it's very hard to describe how I do that, but I can become incredibly res resourcefully um, spontaneous in my emotions in, in, in ways that can provoke in a very playful and, and fun way other people to, to, lift, to lift out of um, whatever doldrums they're in and, and, and snap into, I guess you could say, in a rather effortless way and, and being nudged, but in a very playful way so it doesn't feel like anybody's pushing. It's just there's an energy that wants to play. And so, um, a lot of being inventive emotionally through the uh, 24th gate, I think, is about being very playful. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it just comes as the, as the moment hits me. It's like in a pulse, and it comes through and lifts the space. And you, idealism emotionally? 
Uh, I would say that I have a very idealistic imagination about living together in community, being close to people, being emotionally very loving, being in a community of loving people. And it's again, it's it seems more it's more of an idealistic visioning that I sort of that that helps me get through the sense of disconnection I feel most of the time. So, well, I can't I can't wait when you start sharing your um, your charts and stuff because I have a feeling it's really going to come. That what you're describing sounds beautiful, and I'd love to be touched by that when mm -hmm. when the time comes. That was just an aside. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Did you say everything? I almost felt like I might have cut you off at the end there. No. <clears throat> oh, oh, okay. All right. And then um, the 24th uh, gate, the Siddha is silence. Uh, and in terms of emotional, that's very interesting to experience what silence is on an emotional level because it feels uh, like an infinite, delicious mystery that I am immersed in that... Um, uh, makes me feel like the most special being in existence, but I'm all alone and there's nobody else. <laughs> so that's an interesting way to experience what silence is, but it, it's, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. And people can use their creativity to fathom what that might mean. Uh, I would, I would say that, I mean, I have had moments where I don't know if I say I was enlightened, but I had experiences of the deepest emotional connection, bliss, you know, joy, moments where everything I'd been through disappear and everything was worth it. And I, you know, if, if that's what the light is, I mean, I, you know, the, the, everything, else, all these words don't really mean much to me if I'm in that state because it, it doesn't involve language. It just involves this pure, pure feeling. And the feeling is, is it's, it just basically obscures everything. Oh, that's, that's, all, cool. that's all there is. So. <clears throat> Wow. All right, I'll breathe that in for a second. Boy, are we moving quick. This is fun, though. Okay, now we move up into the very middle here, the spiritual quotient. And this is actually has to do with what you're able to do or, or manifest or um, model through your behavior. So this, this comes, so we went from mental to emotional to now the moving center. Um, so for me, this is the 17th gate, second line. Um, the shadow is opinion. So I can really get into my way of doing things. Boy, I'll tell you, when you translate opinion into your body, it becomes, this is the way, to, this is the way it's done. And I, get, I can get very incredibly um, stubborn on that. And for you, it looks like dishonesty. How does your body manifest dishonesty? The spiritual, I, I guess it's it's like knowing certain things but not practicing them. Mm -hmm. um, maybe pretending to be something you're not. Mm -hmm. um, having you know a lot of self-aggrandizement that really isn't there's there isn't the reality behind it. So you're being dis I'm being dishonest with myself about you know who I am and really how how limited I am. And I'll, let me clarify something because I think some people might have a kind of a um, a glitch when it comes to, well, why are we calling this a spiritual quotient when it has to do with the body? Because the body never lies and whatever, and neither does essence. So not always what, where you're at, essentially spiritually, people can look at you and through your body, they will be able to literally, if they're sensitive, they'll they'll be able to read that. So that's why it's called that way because there is no there's no other side it's it's just the one thing and then if we uh, move into the gift uh, for me in the 17th gate in this position the spiritual quotient is the 17th gate is um, far sightedness so I start to see things I start to adopt other other um, ways of doing things that actually help improve the way I was doing something. So I literally become vulnerable to new ways of new behaviors for getting things um, done. And, and not just in terms of ordinary mundane, but also in the sense of spiritual methodologies for um, expressing my spirit through my form. 
and handling the frequency as that happens through my form. And you, intimacy? Uh, I would say that, I mean, I have a true interest in others and I've learned to, to listen with presence and to create an intimate field with, with people if they allow it. Um, basically that, you know, a, a real connection. Nice. And then uh, the Siddha of the 17th gate is omniscience. Um, and which is very interesting as a, uh, in, in, through the body because I literally feel sometimes like the boundaries or the edges of my body disappear and I literally become the embodiment of every, whatever space I'm in. And so I literally become omniscient to the space because I'm in a condition of direct, deep, intimate contact with everything in that space. Um, and uh, yeah, all at once too, all at once. There's something in me that just allows my aura to just expand and embody and embrace in that way. So yeah, that, that's what that is, omniscience through my body, through my aura for me. Uh, and I would say <clears throat> with transparency that, you know, ultimately there's nothing to hide that um, at some point, I guess you have a, such a full acceptance that you're not trying to hide your weaknesses or limitations. They just are there and you can, you know, you can be very, I guess, trusting and trustworthy with people because mm -hmm. you're so transparent about who you are. Mm -hmm. That, that was nice. Okay, and then uh, that takes us right in, down the road of realization into the vocation. But at the end of the Venus sequence, it's the core wound. And there's some deep, deep, deep teachings in this that we can't go into right now. We don't have time to go into the seven sacred seals, which is a whole another reality and a higher octave of what we're actually stepping out of and into. So what we're going to do here with this is we're going to step, we're going to find the wound in the shadow. And by the time we get to the Siddha, we're going to be into our true vocation. That's how we're going to use this. And so that way we'll incorporate the Venus sequence and wind right on into the Pearl sequence, which is the other side of it. So for me, this yep. gate is, this gate is the 37th gate of um, traditionally, in the traditional I Ching, it's the family, um, but it, it's also um, in the shadow, it's uh, basically uh, weakness. And it's weakness in the sense of um, aggrandizing the, um, The, how should I say it? It's when the male and the female are at odds with each other. When the male, the male side of yourself and the female side of the yourself are at odds. And one side is, is using its strengths to, to pull out the weaknesses in the other side. So you're, so I'm literally um, cutting my own throat when, uh, when I'm doing that. And I can't get in touch with what is my vocation because my wounding says that either the smothering aspect of my mother in the shadow sense or the hyper um, disciplined critical sense of my father has taken over and is ripping the other side of myself apart. And um, so that's my wound in um, the thir 37th gate of, oh, I, which is weakness. Um, and for you, it's unease. So also it's interesting with the vocation philanthropy and ethics where, you know, developing an ethical system, you know, so business i guess unease is is i'm uneasy if i don't know how to proceed if i'm in situations that i'm not comfortable which can be a lot in terms of normal if i if i don't feel that it's a place where i can do my purpose or with people that are not there like i'm very uneasy i can't stay there i i have to go and i'm I just can't sort of uh, put up with things that much. Okay. And then uh, at the gift, the 37th gate, for me in this position, the gift is um, equality. And so all of a sudden I realized that both my mother and father had great gifts to give me. My mother's was her um, 
her, her creativity, she was an artist and she was a really good artist. And, uh, and she still is, she's still around. I, I, I only use the past tense in terms of my father. He's not physically around anymore, so I have to watch that. My mother's still there. And uh, for my father's discipline or following my own inner feel, my own inner nature to be creative. So my vocation arises out of following my inner feel uh, and trusting that in, in order to get into my creativity. And for you, intuition. I would say that, you know, I, I don't, even though I developed a thinking system, I don't really think much. I, I follow my intuition very closely and I, I have a very strong trust of it. And when I follow it, it, it treats me right. And so it, I find it's for my vocation, for everything that I've done, I'm being led or guided through my intuition. Beautiful. And then at the sitter level, um, it's tenderness for me in the 37th gate, which is, when I'm in my the sitter space and I'm truly in my vocation, it, it, I feel like everybody is a sacred member of my family and I, I feel the greatest um, um, honor, deeper than respect, I honor, I, I incredibly honor and the, sac the sacredness of all the beings that are in my presence. Yeah, it's it's just to me that's just deep sacredness. The word tenderness that it brings out of me is is from being in touch with the deep sacredness of that everybody is one family, and I literally um, provide that to the space when I'm truly doing what I love. And you, clarity. I guess clarity would be there are moments of like absolute clarity where I know exactly what to do. I can read the person, read the situation, have the right tool, take them down the right process. And it just, it's, it's just like super obviousness. Mm -hmm. Cool. And, and then we're, we're going to move over into, the, this is the culture. And the culture is where you plant your seed of your vocation and it will grow just like a culture in a, in a lab where <laughs> you put something in a culture to see if it grows and expands but at a different scale. And for me, it's the 32nd gate and the 32nd gate, the, um, the shadow is failure. So it's fa it's, it's failure to launch like the move that movie failure to launch. <laughs> it, it never really gets started because I'm not truly in, um, uh, I'm not in my lineage. I'm not in the right place. I'm not in the right culture. So somehow if something isn't growing um, through me and being created and I, there's a failure for the true me to come out, it just means I'm in the wrong culture. And that's where my shadow comes out. And for you, agitation? I, I, it sounds a bit similar in terms of there's a lot of things about the Canadian culture I don't like. Uh, I can get quite agitated in my judgment of it and um yeah just it's kind of a bit like the unease it's just just a general discomfort with the situations i'm in and then i tend to again leave right and um as you move into the gift the 32nd gate the gift for me is um preservation so it's like every, every culture I've ever been in, even if it wasn't one that allowed my vocation to grow, I did find things that were useful. And so I preserved them. And um, so there, no matter what kind of a culture I'm in, um, I'm always um, absorbing the things that are useful, that I can provide to my culture that will be um, in, in some way of service to others in my field that I connect with. So that's, um, that's how I do that. Uh, initiative, I would say like this kind of, I've always taken a lot of initiative in certain areas, but then in my human design, it said that I should respond to things. And so I stopped taking initiative and I found that then I was waiting for things to happen. And then I was waiting a lot. And I have a lot of Sagittarian drive. So I, I find that I like taking initiative, but I guess I, I need to realize how and when, sort of when do I have the group I am and when I don't. The, the only thing I'll say there is if, if, if you can respond to things almost every moment. So, and every time you get a hit, then you can initiate. 
every time you get a hit, you just got to get a gut hit. You don't have to wait, 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 because there's constantly things coming into your field that you can respond to. And if there are things that need to be responded to, take initiative. Just take it. That's all. It's that it can happen that quick for a, for a manifesting generator like you. You, 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 you wait for that response and bam, then you can initiate, then you, then you can manifest. It's that quick, that simple. Yeah. Uh, so don't, don't over, don't just cause people say, wait to respond. Yeah. But you can be responding moment to moment, to moment, to moment, to moment in the right scenarios, you know, boom, boom, boom. Different than me, a projector. Yeah. I, I gotta, I mean, what I know how to manifest, I can be just like a manifester if I've already done it in my life. But I have to wait for invitations, you know, and that is that's the true meaning of waiting right there because, you know, but we won't get into that right now because we're not doing that. We're doing a gene keys, not a human design. Anyway, so at the sitter level, for me, it is uh, veneration and it's simple. I start the more I connect through what I do and, and what I've preserved, all the precious treasures I've gathered in my life and I share with others and they start tapping into it and appreciating it, the more reverence I feel for life and everything i just feel like thank god i'm here and thank god you're here and thank god all this is happening you know veneration that's that's the siddha of my culture and for you awakening woo. well i was i guess essentially i'm developing a system to awaken the culture um so i'm thinking more at the at the higher species level um as as the aim point and i guess it's it's linked to my own awakening as I become more um, committed to spirit and allowance and surrender to spirit, then there's more sort of awakening. Yeah. Um, Beautiful. And, and, and I've been skipping lines because of the time, but we both have line four network in our culture. So that means it's going to come to our networks. That's why we're doing what we're doing online and doing this, starting to do this stuff more because that's where the networks are. Interesting. Good to know, huh? Okay, can you pull it down so we get the top one again? We're going to go back into the original note that we started this whole journey with before we go to the pearl, but now it's not life's work, it's service. It's what are what is our service? What service are we here to do? Um, and again, for me, it's, it's the same thing I already went through. I'm going to go through all three of them real quick because I've already been through it, but it, it steps from division to, and that, that means I'm comparing the way I do things, the way other people do things. I serve better than you do, blah, 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 blah. Whole, whole nonsense there of dividing. But in guidance, I just bring my service in and those who can be served by it will be served by it. And then ultimately I step into my virtue where, where my service is my virtue. Whatever I'm doing is creating a platform for people to, to, to discover who they are, simply, just by my being. Um, and, and totally just in my different roles, I provide whatever mask is needed, whatever reflection is needed that that person most needs to see to grow, to, to, to manifest their life's work. So I function as a mirror to others through my life's work. And so I just, you see, I just went through all three right now because we've already been through that one. If you feel like doing that, uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, and now it's, it's, it's your, what, what do you hear? You know, what is well, you're a third line, so it's, it's, um, let me think. Uh, yeah, I got it. Uh, okay, good. Well, you know, when, again, when I'm in my highest form, I, I'm of true service to the species. I'm not trying to force anything. I have the inner strength to do it. And the majesty comes as I surrender to the, you know, high wow. purpose. Wow, that just went through my whole body. You're, you're, you're yeah, I, I like to point out when people are good at this stuff, you're good at this stuff. So even if you don't intellectually get all the little pieces, you tap into it with your being and you you, you, you put it out there. So it's really, I want to remember, I just remember too, that the service is specifically how we're going to bring it into our vocation. The actual sphere here, when we're dealing with the pearl, this blue part over here, the blue part over here, um, is the brand. I, for, I forgot that that's the brand. That's what it is when it's in relation to the pearl. So so that would be how your brand manifests. That's what you just said. And for me, obviously, it's about mirroring other people's greatest potential, um, which I seem to be doing a lot more of, which is great. And so now we'll drop finally into the pearl, and that'll be the last thing. And for me, again, it's the 32nd gate, but this time it's the pearl. So it's directly related to how prosperity works for me as a whole. And I have the sixth line, which is nature. 
and nature just means I don't really focus on how to make money. I just tap into the great nature of, of existence. And the more I'm in tune with my environment and who I'm connecting with and everything, the more prosperity just comes at me. Uh, and so anyway, when I'm not in touch with that, I fail because like I already said over here where I have the 30 second gate, I also have it here. But in this case, it's the sixth line instead of the fourth line of the network like you, it's this line six, and this would be nature. And so if I just follow nature, not, not only my nature, but great nature, then, uh, but when I'm out of touch with that, I fail. So that's, that's when I get too worried about money and stuff. So we'll just stick with the shadow now. So for me, it's failure again, in terms of prosperity for you, you get a whole new gate here and it's well, I, I guess the control would be, you know, wanting to control things because I don't like how they're organized or what's happening, but sort of exerting myself. Uh, too much because most people of course don't like being controlled and um, not reading the pace and trying to impose something that the timing is wrong on and not in line with the simplicity you know coming with too much complexity rather than uh, what's appropriate in the moment yeah cool um, and for me if I if I hop into the uh, gift of preservation it's um, it's always that quest of mine to find out what's real in nature and reproduce it in the human experience on a different scale so I'm constantly preserving the natural the natural expression through the human expression so that to me kind of is how I preserve nature through through what I do I'd say for authority, when I truly honor my inner authority and follow my knowing, I can be, a, again, good service to those I'm serving. Uh, if I sort of bend to the will of another or to the institutionalized processes that we seem to be surrounded by, I think that's when I, I dip down into the control again. Like when I really am an authority as a facilitator or as a designer or as a, a coach, uh, the feedback and information that I'm giving out, I think is, is quite accurate. And then uh, for me, the pearl um, virtue, uh, or no, not virtue, sorry, uh, veneration. Um, in line six nature so it's the nature of veneration and also my venerating nature so the more i can appreciate nature the more it teaches me about how to be prosperous that that is a, such a truth for me because there's so much knowledge in nature for me to um to bring into what i do to bring into my service which is mirroring others greatest potential and that's how that pearl for me taps back up into the brand here when we're dealing with that so I just showed it, it. This is also possible. We're not going to get into that right now. You're just going to share your Siddha of the Pearl. Uh, valor. I mean, Valor, I think, is usually associated with knights. They have Valor, and I think it's linked to honor. But I, th I think in this case, it's, it's having the true sort of like the, the, the quest for the Holy Grail. Mm -hmm and having the valor to almost, I think, involves a purity of heart to, to sort of be able to see the Holy Grail, which to me is like the gold in each person mm. and being able to situate things so that people's gifts can rise, be seen and be connected in a manner that, you know, again, helps the whole. And, and again, I'm sort of out of my sense of, of uh, you know, my authority, it becomes the sort of authority of the need of the moment. Nice. Okay, so let's let's um, terminate the screen share at this point, please. Okay, beautiful. So that was a lightning fast. I can't imagine what the next week's going to be like for both of us because that you, you, what we just tapped into in ourselves and went through in the space of an hour. In maybe 20 minutes is that's crazy <laughs> I mean it, it, it 
to go through this correctly, we would have had to go through it at the speed we went up the first one we did. It would take like three, about three hours, four hours to really elaborate in each point. But it's a great exercise to tap into the essence and just give a sentence. And in some cases, we gave a paragraph. So what? But I mean, we didn't go on and do half a book anyway. So thank God. But yeah, what a wonderful exercise. And I'm really, um, really happy that you chose to, it just came out of you to do it that way. And, I'm, and that now I see it's part of your design we just went through to be able to do that. So that's really cool that you were able to manifest like that. So at this point, um, for all of you out there, this is a great gift for everybody because it's never been done like this ever. I, I know of nobody who's gone through the entire golden path, sentence by sentence, shadow by shadow, gift by gift, sitter by sitter through every single point in the golden path. And, and we didn't even cover the lines that connect these spheres, by the way. That's a whole other thing that we could have thrown in to bring out even more. But it really, once you go through all the spheres, those lines will literally in sheer necessity have to start to form because we've just lit up all the spheres. So those lines are going to start to function because they are based in reality also um, from the deep, deep intuition of the person. Richard Rudd, give him credit. He discovered this, Gene Keys, The Golden Path. Um, and we are using that system right now to do this. Although uh, what, I do it, uh, what I do with it through my Synergy Accelerator Voyages is I call life codes and I do something a little bit different, uh, but still I owe a lot to him and to Ra Uruhu who created the human design from which Richard Rudd derived his gene keys. So there's a whole chain of events there going on from, it, from Ra Uruhu, human design, Richard Rudd gene keys to me, Darmendra Gordon, life codes. And so can you at this point, uh, yes, thank you everyone for listening. And if you're interested in contacting Darmendra for, to go through this experience, I would strongly suggest it. It's uh, quite enlightening. <laughs>